Uh, turn your Bibles to uh, 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 6, and we're going to look at having God's vision. How do you see things? Do you see things the way God sees things? That's what I want to ask you today. That's a big question. And I hope you'll leave this place thinking about that. That's after 1 Kings, 2 Kings. Now, I don't know about you, but as I get older, I never thought I'd ever need this. <laughs> we could be walking down the street when I was I, I started out preaching at 19 and I was around all you and, and, and there was a sign down the street I can't even track it was on that sign now I can't even see it I feel like Mr. Magoo <laughs> I told my wife I said you know I just drive by by faith and not by sight you maybe <laughs> Well, this is one of my favorite characters in the entire Bible, uh, Elisha, the great prophet of God. He gets sort of overshadowed with Elijah, but he got a double portion of Elijah's spirit. Now, I'm going to read this as we get along, and so keep your Bibles open. I like, I like to keep your Bibles open. Six. Uh, and it's the Second Kings chapter 6, and we're going to look at uh, verses 8 through 23. And I'm using the authorized version. Yes, I do believe in the King James Version. It's not the only version that is that we can have, but I like it. And you know why? Because you try to memorize all those verses after 50 years out of another version. It's just, you can't do it, hard. <laughs> That's number one, but I like the King James. So if you don't like the these and thous, maybe you can struggle through it with me. Let me tell you about a fight I had. No, I won last week, so just calm down. It was about... 50, 60 years ago. I grew up in Agricola, Mississippi, population 500. My dad was a football coach, had 300 brothers. We were all in athletics. Uh, I actually have a book on that too, about game on all the time growing up, my home, legendary football coach. So uh, we were always tussling around playing and everything. And when football season was over, I was in seventh grade, everybody it was always a fight would break out. And, you know, we, 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 we you know, yeah, I, I, I wrestle a little bit with my brothers. I was the oldest, as long as I was the oldest, and, and they didn't grow up like as high as me. I, I was pretty good, but when they got up, I stopped. Especially the one that played for Mississippi State football uh, <laughs> on, his, on their college team. I stopped tussling with them. But we used to get in a tussle. So Blake Howard, the assistant coach uh, with my dad, he said, I'm, I'm tired of this. You know what we're going to do when we get to the club? Now, you couldn't do anything like this today, okay? You understand? But, you know, I'm old. And uh, so... He said, we're going to get the gloves out. You guys want to fight? We'll have a match every recess. Wow. So uh, I, I got to uh, fight against Richard, or rabbit, call him rabbit, because he was always around like that. <laughs> and boom, I landed, I landed there, and I think he was a little scared of me, you know, and oh, I was so happy. But I got to move up in the, in the rankings to Rusty Bedgood. Oh, Rusty Bedgood. He was one of these that just went in after, you know, and he just, he just punched and punched and punched. But you know, I won the bat battle, you know, I won the, won the fight, you know how I won? Let me tell you, this is the diagnosis. I hit him with my nose on his hand. <laughs> my stomach also hit him. <laughs> and with my ear, I eared him to death. <laughs> no, he really beat me. Okay. <laughs> when we got back, when I got back to class, the only thing, only, only, only consolation, I think it's in South Korea, the, the girls had pity on me, you know. But I didn't like the girls much in there anyway. But anyway, that was, that was one time I liked it. Now, why did I tell you that stupid story? Because for everything, there's sort of a different option about how you see things, right? right. Now, we're that way. You know, that's why some people like uh, Fox News and other people are blinded and like the other people. <laughs> I will get in politics. No, no. <laughs> but you know what's important is we need to have God's vision. There are many things we need to accomplish by seeing things the way God sees things. And let me tell you, folks, a lot of people don't do that. Matter of fact, I imagine the majority of us don't do that. As a matter of fact, a lot of times I don't do that, you don't do that. We've got to stay prayed up so we can. Because all around us today, the devil wants to, well, so while we, but unless, Adrian Rogers said, unless, unless that which is with us it is in us, but 
unless that which is uh, in us is that which is above us, the Lord, then that we'll all fall to that which is around us. And so we need to see things the way God sees things. We need to see who God is, how glorious the gospel is, how sweet God's word is, how sensible it is to be a Baptist. Yeah, I'm not ashamed of that. <laughs> how wonderful the hymns are. And uh, how needful Christian fellowship is. How powerful our testimony is. And what God wants to do in this church. Now Elisha's servant saw an invisible army of God to protect Elisha and his servant. It didn't start out that way. He did not see this until God opened his eyes. And one of the great verses here, we're going to get to it in a minute. Is he's prayed for him. God opened his eyes. Oh, we need that for the president. He looks like he's half asleep all the time anyway. But uh, we need that in our government. We need that in our lives. But we need that in the church. Amen. And we certainly need that in all that we do in our lives. So how does this happen? We can turn a bad situation into a good one through the vision God gives us. But you can come go, go through impossible situations if you'll only look at things the way God does. Now, I'm going to give you three characteristics of what it means to have God's vision. Or, if you want to be cool, get in God's optometry shop. One, God's vision sees something when others see nothing. And that's really the gist of this story. Now, you didn't think I was going to get this. Okay. But the background is, the Syrian army was basically mad because Elisha had a hotline to God. He was a one-man CIA service. He could tell when, when they were going to attack. He was a good friend to have around. And especially the king liked him, King Joram. So, oh, the, I think it was the king or, or, or the uh, broke up. He says, hey, how about this guy tell us wherever we're going to attack? Who, why don't, what, what are you going to do about him? He says, why don't you go get him? Okay, they knew where he lived. He lived in Dothan. Not Dothan, Alabama. Dothan. And uh, so, I don't know if it's all the army, but it's a lot of the army goes, and they're in their chariots, and they're around. And the, uh, we pick up the story there. Let me read it, and then we'll talk about it. Verse 15 of 1 Corinthians 6. If you have your Bible, show it to me. I like that. Okay. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host, that's a lot of people, come past the city both with horses and chariots. And the servant said to him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for there are more with us than there are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes, that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire about them. Now, we limit our vision by only seeing what we see physically and not spiritually. And most people don't see what God sees. Elisha's servant didn't. He went out. Let's just sort of dramatize this. He's going out to get the paper. You know? and, 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 and he, he, he goes down. If I get down, I'll call it and get back up. But anyway, gets down, gets the, gets the paper, and he looks around. Woo. There's a there's an arm, there's a chariot, there's a chariot, there's a chariot, there's a chariot, there's a chariot. His breath's taken away. We're going to die! Amen. I'm going to die if I get away. He runs in. And he says, Master! 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 They're all out there. He says, They're all us. They're going to kill us. Or, or he, pray, he, he said, What are we going to do? Now, I like how I man, is he cool under pressure. He didn't even breathe one little worry. He started praying. Now he didn't say, now this is what every one of us would do. We'd say, oh God, they're out there, they're going to kill us. I'm just having such a hard time, I've got a headache. <laughs> or somebody was mean to me. And we think it's the end of the world. But, 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 he didn't pray for that. He didn't pray for protection. He was protected by God. I mean, anybody can tell you where you're going to attack. Pretty good. God told him. He was praying for a servant. He wasn't scared of the army. 
He was afraid of the faith. He, 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 his servant didn't have enough faith. And understand this. We think about, oh, the world's so rotten and all these people are going to hell or they're in government and everything else. You know, God can take care of those folks. What he's worried about is you and I. And what we're going to do is stand against the forces of evil. Yeah. And you get around this pity party and, and, and all your hands, and, oh, oh, it's so terrible. God says, wake up and understand that there's more with us than there is with him. Yeah. Now, this is what happened. <laughs> After a while, the servant. Oh, I'm going to be with you permanently here today. <laughs> The servant went out and tried to take another one. <laughs> All right. He goes out there. Gets around. This time, it's different. This time, instead of just seeing the chariots, guess what he saw? Here's an angel. There's an angel. Everywhere's an angel. And you know what he said? He went out and he says, there's more to us than there is for them. <laughs> what changed? All in a split second, when he saw what God wanted him to see, then everything was different. Now what am I telling you today? I'm telling you that whatever you are down about, depressed about, you heard about, you need to be like Isaiah who said when he saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple, then he said, Lord, here am I, Lord, send me. And so here we have in this uh, thing, I have to say it's, it's an eye opener thing. Uh, Elisha didn't explain words, but he just turned to the Lord in prayer. God opened his eyes to, of, of, the, uh, of, of the servant. And this is all through the Bible. You know, Jesus, he didn't see things the way we see things. Jesus, just the woman at the well. One of the things we miss about the story about the woman at the well, she believed and went in and brought the whole city back to him. What did the disciples do? I'll tell you what they did. They were hungry, and they went in to get a Happy Meal at McDonald's. <laughs> and they came back out, and she's got the whole town around him. And he said, Master, eat! He says, I've got meat to eat. I ain't got time to eat right now. Look what this woman did. Here, here. Wow. He saw things differently than those disciples did. They had a lot to learn, didn't they? Then he looked out, and there was an angel, and here was an angel, and everywhere was an angel, and boy... By the, uh, by the way, Brad Scammer says he, he does TWA. That's no airline, airline out of business. But Christians still ought to have it. You know what that is? Travel with angels. <laughs> the, listen to this. Psalms 34 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them and that fear him and deliver them. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Can you say amen to that? <laughs> but the Lord delivereth him out of some of them. Well, he delivers that all of them. Now, he may not deliver it the way you believe it. You say, well, I'm naming you claim it. Well, maybe God didn't want you to claim it. He's going to give you something else that's better in the long run. Yeah, you see, Vance Havner says, it's hard to be optimistic with a misty optic. And we need to have vision that helps us to see who God is and what he's doing. When God opened the servant's eyes, he was able to see all the resources God had given them. And he changed his perspective completely. Somebody said in the Sunday school class, I like to go to Sunday school, I don't try to take over, but I, I like to go in there. But this, this church is a very old church, and, uh, and I'm not, you know, in, in years, crowd of them. And uh, that's great. We don't forget about all the people who've been saved through the years of that. We shouldn't. God wants us to rejoice in that. And God wants us to have clear vision uh, and now he saw an angel, and there was an angel everywhere. And, and you know, angels do. Now, don't, don't start praying to angels. Uh, Touch with the angel had uh, that movie, whatever, TV show. Had a lot to be, you know, fill in. And took some liberties. But angels are existence in our world. The Bible does say we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And uh, all through the Bible, angels came to the rescue of people. Peter in prison, Daniel in the lion's den, the children of Israel in the fiery furnace. And some people believe that was Jesus. Spurgeon did. Uh, 
I like what Elder Other Son said about this. This is the thing when the, the, the servant saw the uh, chariots and saw uh, the angels there. He said, you see, all of Dothan was saved. For the warfare was only against the master. Who's the master? Elisha. And the master could not be hurt or judged. Every assault against the master was not only a prophet, but all against all the people. If you have godly leaders that will stand up for God as a pastor, as politicians, yeah, there's some of them still around maybe. Guess what? That's going to filter down to the rest of it. You know why the world's so rocking, rotten right now, or our, our country? It's because we don't have leaders like that. I don't want to get into all that. It was here all night. But anyway, Dover was saved. The disciples, when they were in the... Here's a great example. The disciples were in the boat with Jesus. And uh, the wind started. And I've been on the Sea of Galilee. And they say it could just happen just like that. These winds were sort of growing up. And, and, and this massive... And what's Jesus doing? He's sleeping. That's what he up. Now, boy, that is sound sleep. I want to tell you. Your boat's about to get face. It's like... And his master, don't you care that we perish? And he just gets up and says, cool it. Or whatever he said. <laughs> and he stopped. <laughs> and he says, boy, what matter of man is this? That even the, the winds of a... They didn't have to worry as long as they were with Jesus. They were safe. Do I like to stack up all the blessings of being a Christian as opposed to all those blessings that you don't have for being lost and being unsaved and going to hell eventually? We talked about it in Sunday school. Atheism is a temporary condition. There is no atheist in hell. There's a lot of people like the rich man who said, Lord, send somebody to get me out of here. We don't live in purgatory here. It's one man wants to die. After that, the judgment. Well, we'll never get to these other two. Let's get to them. You think I'm true, don't you? Well, no. <laughs> it is in God's vision is in complete control at all times. Now listen, listen to this. Verse 18. Don't close your Bible. Open it. Back up if you have. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people. I pray thee would blind us. Now, Elisha is only beginning to have a good time. It's not just that he saw the angels. Look, what, look, 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 look what's going to happen. He smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way. Neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you speak. That's the king. See. But he led him to Samaria, and it came to pass when they were come to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open their eyes. <laughs> and he opened their eyes, and there they are, right in the middle of town. And the enemy surrounded them. And, uh, and the Lord opened their eyes and they, they saw and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. Now look, 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 can you imagine this? Here's all the, the armies and God strikes them down at the word of Elijah. And then, not only that, he takes them all the way. I don't know how long Dothan is to Samaria. We look at the map. But he takes them all the way from Dothan to Samaria and puts them right in the middle of town. This is the army of Syria. And the old king comes out to him and goes, Woo! How'd you do that? <laughs> That's what I would have said. Mm -hmm. And then he says, Open their eyes. And can you imagine when they open their eyes? Oh, what? How did we get into this? So you mess with the man of God. If you mess with the man of God, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. People found out. They haven't. Jezebel found out about that with Elijah. But I'm not talking about some weak, weak need. Please, everybody, preacher. I'm talking about somebody who says this is the word of God and this is what it says. And that's what Elisha was. See, the man that had come to get them was in control of them. Elisha, God was through him. And, and, and when they woke up, they were in the middle of their enemies and they were completely disarmed. Now, now you talk about a surprise. The king says, what am I going to do? I wasn't counting on that. He's sort of filling in blanks right now. <laughs> So what does the king do with the great army of Syria? He's been so afraid that he's delivered him out of out of, uh, out, out of the man of God. It's all it's a day's work for Elisha, and he knew along the way that God had the situation in hand, and these people were totally blinded to what was going to happen to them. And then their eyes are open. The unbelieving world needs their eyes open to the atoning work of Christ. 
to the horrors of hell, to the power of the gospel, what their sin is doing to their life, how wonderful Jesus is and Christian fellowship and how important their soul needs to be prepared to go to be with Jesus in heaven instead of being lost forever in hell. Here's a scripture. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, this is the condition, and by the way, it was a condition in Paul's day of people that didn't know Christ, and certainly it's a position, uh, a, a, a condition that people are in. Let me just give a little side note here. This is the most informationally uh, written uh, culture that we've had today. I mean, you know, somebody's uh, on their, using their, their phone and driving, they do that. Get out of the way! You're going to kill. Yes. But 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 here they're doing this and all that with all of our information, with everything we can get at the at the at the point push of a button, we have more biblical ignorance than we ever had today. You know why? This is this will tell you why. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses two through four. We renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, and that's right, it's hid today from a lot of folks. It is, it, it is hid to them that are lost. Oh, oh, Paul said people are lost without Jesus. Now I know of a church that the pastor said, uh, you without Christ, you're lost. The lady said, I'm never coming back. I don't want to be treated that way. I'm sorry, folks. The word of God is a sharp two-edged sword. You get on God's side, you ain't worried about it. But anyway. But if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, to whom the God of this world, who's that? The devil. Blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them. People are walking around blinded today, not understanding the eternity they're going to have to answer before God, whether they accepted Christ or not. Not understanding how important this book is. But you try to read this book in Congress today, they'll have a conviction fit. Well, they all do it. Be good for them. Do you know, uh, I like history. Do you know the last time we saw a president pray on TV when that was? Somebody said, well, what a bomb. No. Uh, and, and sure, it's a Biden. Yeah, he used God's name in that a lot. But anyway, it wasn't from. you got to go all the way back to FDR. When they hit the benches of Normandy, he was praying, and they recorded that prayer. Do you believe God answered that prayer? I do. You know what? We need a good old-fashioned dose of understanding how desperate we are without God. And all through history, we've seen that. Jonathan Edwards got up and preached sinners in the hands of an angry God about to a bunch of young people that thought they were saved because they signed their names up at age 12 with the halfway covenant. And they, they thought they were going to slip into the, death, into the depths of hell because they understood what they were, were without Christ. And, they got saved. and that's what we need today. Well, I digress. Let me look at one other thing. Here. Not only is God's vision complete, in complete control all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you do with this army? Well, this is what happens. It conquers all the attacks of the evil one. By the way, there's another place in the Bible that really shows where we are today without Christ and affluent. Uh, in Revelation, the church of Laodicea, Jesus rebuked them. Jesus rebuked them because they said, we are rich, we're increasing goods, we have need of nothing. And he said, you're wretched, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. That's where a lot of folks are today. Oh, I don't need anything. I don't need God. You heard that? Oh, they will. They will. I don't need now. Oh, yeah. Just wait. You say Christians don't ever have any problems? I didn't say that. You say Christians never get sick? I didn't say that. You know, we're all going to die. But well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to heaven because Jesus is my Savior and He's holding my hand through every difficulty. <laughs> and he can, do, he, he can do that for you too if you'll accept it. Well, what happened? We'll find out. Verse 21 through verse 23. And the king of Israel said unto Israel, when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldst thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive into 
thy sword and thy bow, set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go back to their master, and he prepared, and he prepared great provision for them, and when he had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to the master. So the bands, <laughs> this is the understatement of the year, listen to this. <laughs> so the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Amen. Woo! I wouldn't, would you? I mean, they became pretty good buddies after that, because Naaman's coming in, looking at Elisha there. Wait a minute. Did, 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 did Israel have a, 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 a big army? No. Did they have greater leaders? No. Joram was a dunce, if you really want to know the truth. Well, why, why, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. God was, one of us, God, he was a majority. And they had the prophet of God. And, 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 and so he said, no, you don't have to do that. Send them back. You know, Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, when they shall obtain mercy. You know, I don't grudge your holding against somebody. You think, oh, it's my right to do that. They offended me. I, we talked about in Sunday school, two women that were fighting maybe, and Paul said, cut it out, knock it off. But you know what? You're not hurting anybody but yourself if you have unforgiveness in your heart. And, and, and so what you did do is show a little mercy. But I was right and she was wrong. Or I was right and he was wrong. I mean, equal opportunity here. I don't care who was right and who was wrong or whatever. Get over it! Get right with God. Anything that, that basically uh, uh, stops my communication with the Lord in prayer, the Bible says, if I have a deceitful heart, the Lord won't hear me. Then, then we've got problems. So what happened? Well, they, they, go back to, they go back to Syria and they don't come back anymore. <laughs> and, and, and Elisha was the one that was, was uh, helping him and working him, and, and God was using him. And, uh, and as I went back, uh, God uh, did not send uh, Elisha to leave his enemies in their trap and then murder them in cold blood. They showed mercy to them. They went back. And so uh, we get so discouraged a lot of times, we don't think we can overcome when God's already overcome. The Bible says we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. And that, uh, that if God be for us, who can be against us? And, and so here they went back and and they never came back again. And I'll tell you what, some people learned a lesson. It's not the numbers that you have at, in an army. It's not the leaders you have. It's God being on your side and your reliance on Him. Listen to this. To be distressed, look within. To be defeated, look back. To be distracted, look around. To be dismayed, look before. To be delivered, look to Christ. To be delighted, look to God in heaven. Where are you looking today? Look at your problems, you can find more. You know, the more problems you look at, the more problems you're going to have. But the Bible says, let us lay aside every sin and that does easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking forward. You know, the armor of the of the, 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 the Roman soldier didn't have armor for the backside. If you run, uh, God's not going to protect that. But if you'll follow him, the Lord will direct you and help you. Listen to these scriptures. There, then Jesus opened their understanding that what they might understand the scriptures. He opened their eyes. Acts 7, 56. Paul, Stephen is standing and he says, Behold, I see the, in the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Acts 16, 4. Uh, 14, when uh, Lydia heard the gospel, it says, The Lord opened her heart, and she attended to the things spoken to us. This is Paul's prayer, Ephesians 1.18, That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you might know the hope of your calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance of the saints are. There is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that blood, lose all their guilty stains. Here since by faith I saw the stream, Thy flowing wound supply. Redeeming love has been my theme and shall be when I die. And shall be when I die. The greatest opening of your eyes is when you see Jesus on the cross dying in your place. Not, re not, not, not thinking what the world thinks. Oh, this is another Jew that was misunderstood. Oh, nobody else has died and then rose again from the grave the way Jesus did. No, you see him there as your only hope for heaven. You see him when he said it is finished, meaning his life wasn't finished. He rose three days later. The plan of salvation is finished. 
So that whoever you are, if you put your faith and your trust in Christ, if you come to Him and believe in Him, He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. When you see things differently, God can bless. I don't know. Maybe I've got time to do this. I was a student at Mississippi Gulf Coast Junior College. Perkinson, Mississippi, down on the Gulf Coast. I was there and I got involved with the Baptist Union, went to the Colorado as the youth director, and I started preaching there. And people said, You better go back and study for preaching because you're a preacher. I went back and uh, got in the dorm. There was a lot of, I was on the athletic, I was on the baseball team. And I was on a lot, a lot around, by a lot of people, and a lot of people there in the Mississippi Gulf Coast, they were boss. But we started praying for them. There, there was ways you could look at you and say, okay, this is a terrible place. I'd like to get out here and go to the Baptist school I went to. But we, we started praying every, every, every uh, Saturday night, uh, every night, uh, Tuesday through Friday. I don't know why, we started studying the book of Revelation. And we prayed, prayed for revival, prayed for God to work. And, if, and, and every once in a while, people come in, lost people we talked with. Went on, went to William Perry College, started pastoring, way out in Boondocks, Mississippi there. Got a call in the spring, says, Dan, would you like to come and, and preach? We're asking four preacher boys, a couple of you guys that went to William Perry, and uh, one guy that's there, to preach every night. We're going to have a campus of religious uh, emphasis week. Well, we did those before. Some of them were even bored. Some of the people they had as Catholic priests, I like got a good sleeping time when he was talking. But anyway, this this was evangelical Christian. I said, good, great, sure, I'd love to do that. I mean, I'm going to turn down this time to preach. And so uh, I was getting ready to go, and then I realized that little Bible study group. We encourage people to, to keep that little prayer group going. It was just four or five of us there. It had turned into a... Uh, well, they invited the ladies to win. They couldn't, and, and they started meeting in the chapel that held 200 people. Not only that, people were getting saved. I didn't know would ever get saved. They invited me back on Friday night. This is back in the early 70s. I know. Back in the early 70s, and the, the, the campus was, uh, was, was a buzz. With, with secular campus. Not a Baptist campus. Secular campus. People were burning in Berkeley, and I've been to Berkeley and all that. It's a weird place. Uh, they were burning. They were burning buildings down and everything else. People were bowing at the foot of the cross because of some people that saw things differently than the way the world did. Do you know? I was going to come and preach on Monday night. Friday night, they got out in front of the campus walkway there, and they had an all night for God. They started singing hymns or whatever. The, Horses wore back then. And they got in front of the athletic dorm and the football players started cursing them out. One guy that was in the group said, You come on down if you if you're a man enough to face who you are without God and come to Christ. The guy got in a conviction and got saved right there. Amen. They were they were they were singing all night long. And they told they called the uh, the the old uh, the, the dean about it and he said, Are they burning down that building? No, they're just praying and singing. He said, well, let them go. Right? We need more of that. Yeah. Instead of the other stuff. Monday, I came down there, and it, I, I talked with people, and somebody said, Dan, I got sight. Somebody, Dan, I got sight. Girl, people told me that. I said, well, what, what's going on here, Lord? We just had a little Bible study group. So we got into the chapel, and when we got there, nobody, uh, there were people in the aisles, and I preached that day on the people of the cross. People couldn't come forward. I said, if you come to Christ right now, just stand. Say you're giving your life to Christ. Like Elisha's servant saw the chariots. Here was a person. There was a person. There was a person. There was a person. And by the time Wednesday night, we had to go to the gym. There were 100 people come to Christ that week. I still have contacts with people. I have things that I, I don't even realize happen. A guy, Kenny Gott, went pastor a long, a long tenure in Jackson, Mississippi, and said, I was there the night that uh, you were there or in, in that revival meeting, and I got saved in that revival. You don't know it, but I've surrendered to preach, and I've been preaching ever since. Amen. 
Now, I'll just tell you that long story, and forgive me if I've gone over time. I don't know if you've got an overtime or what. They do on, you know, they don't know. They go in extra innings in baseball, so. <laughs> anyway, I tell you that story to say God exceeded our expectations. Because I was only looking at what everybody else was looking at around. Oh, well, we got all these people over here. They're, they're all just dumb guys going to hell. <laughs> Tell you what, some of those people are dying right now. They're in heaven. And it's not because of who I was. It's because of who God is. Now, I'll tell you, whatever God has in store for your church, you need to look to the Lord and not look to the people. And, and, and not look at the circumstances or not look at the latest, greatest things you've got to do in the church to be popular with people. Yeah. <laughs> look at what God wants you to do. Look at where God wants you to be. Look at the place God wants you to be in. And you're going to be like Elisha and you're going to be motherproof. And when God takes you home, He says, come on up here. Good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over some things. I'm going to give you a lot more than that. All of heaven because of who God is and our vision of looking at Him. Let's pray.